whether you're working in Windows NT or Windows 2000, if you want remote access via a modem, you want to work with RAS. When it comes time to configure RAS, you can install it if you're in an NT4 environment by right-clicking on Network Neighborhood, then go into Properties, and on the Services tab, you can add it. If you're in Windows 2000, you initiate it by going to Start, Programs, Administrative Tools, and then Routing and Remote Access. If you come to this screen and you don't see your server up here, what you could do is simply go to Action and click on Add Server. However, the server I'm currently working on is here. I'm going to click on it here and it'll show me if it's actually configured for remote access. You'll notice it has a little red arrow, which means it's not configured. So since it's highlighted, I'm going to go up here to Action, Configure and Enable Routing and Remote Access. That's going to bring up the Routing or most Remote Access Server Setup Wizard. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to choose the Remote Access Server. I'm going to allow both NetBuoy and TCP IP here. Now, if I want my DHCP server to automatically assign the addresses, I can choose automatically, or I can specify from a set of ranges. If you are working with the standard framing protocol, which is PPP, you can specify each. When you get into some older equipment like SLIP, the SLIP framing protocol will not allow DHCP to work because it doesn't know anything about it. It can't work with it. I'm going to go ahead and specify the range of addresses so you can see how it's done. Click Next. I'm going to add a new range of addresses. Not only does it have the range of addresses, but it shows me the number of addresses I have available here. I'm going to click OK. If I want to add another range, I can. And what it will do is it will fill up the first range first and then, then the next. If I wish this to be part of a database that keeps track of all the information, which is called RADIUS, I can do so. But I'm going to choose not to since I don't have a RADIUS set up. I'll click Finish. Let's go ahead and configure our policies here. I'm going to right click our remote access policies. Select New Remote Access Policy. Let's give it a name. Apollo 1. So we're going to determine the conditions to match. Let's click Add. You can specify the phone number dialed by the user when they dial in. Radius clients. Day and time restrictions identifiers, service type, tunnel type, and Windows group. Let's select something here. We can specify to grant or deny remote access permission for this particular selection. 
want to edit the profile, we can. Let's go through our possibilities here we can work with. We can restrict dial-in to only a specified number. This can increase our security. We can restrict the dial-in media type. We can restrict access to the following days or time. Restrict maximum sessions, time-wise. Disconnect if idle for a certain period of time. We can make specifications on the IP assignments. Multi-link allows more than one phone line to come into the machine, so it'll speed it up instead of having, say, one 56K connection, you can have two 56K connections. Under advanced, we can specify service type or frame protocol type. Here we have PPP. We made a comparison before to SLIP. SLIP is much older than PPP. PPP will support things like DHCP. Plus, it will allow protocols such as TCP IP, NetBuoy, and IPX. SLIP only supports TCP IP. Encryption, we have no encryption, basic encryption, or strong encryption. And authentication. Under your authentication, you can allow Microsoft encrypted authentication, Microsoft encrypted authentication version 2. These require Microsoft connections. In other words, the machine has to have a Microsoft product in order to be able to go through this. If you have a non-Microsoft connection, you can use CHAP. If you have a connection that does not support encryption, you can go through here. Now, this is just dealing with the authentication. If you want the data to be encrypted, you must go up here. If you were configuring an NT4 machine, there is a separate box for data encryption under the Microsoft Encrypted Authentication. So you have two types of encryption. You have the authentication where your password is encrypted, and you have your data encryption. They're two separate items. I'm going to click OK to move on to the next screen. We'll click Finish. Our profile set up. 